So, I mean, it's come a long way in five years. So uh, you talked about some of the differences between then and now in your presentation. So could you just uh, maybe highlight a couple of the key, the key changes? Yeah, I think that in um, 2005, uh, when the, um, the joint venture was formed, um, we had a relatively small number of clients, and most of those clients had actually been brought in um, to the organisation, uh, not necessarily sort of voluntarily, as part of the kind of early adopters. Uh, I think their experience, really, of coming into a shared services that was in sort of transition at that time with the, uh, the setup of the joint venture uh, was probably, from a service perspective, wasn't as, as good as they, they probably would have liked. Um, so what we've done is really invested very, very strongly um, in a number of um, areas around continuous um, improvements, mm -hmm. uh, using uh, lean uh, Six Sigma methodologies, uh, training people, uh, empowering people to uh, lead on projects, designed really to streamline processes, um, to look at different ways of doing things, uh, working with clients to get ideas and sort of drive innovation uh, in terms of making some of those um, changes that really have, I think, contributed to the levels of client satisfaction uh, going from 37% from in uh, 2007 up to 85% uh, this year. Right, so that, that maturity um, is clearly reflected in the, the client satisfaction. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned something about the Hackett grid. Could you just maybe explain uh, how, what is that actually measuring? Um, the, the Hackett grid, um, well, Hackett, first of all, is a global benchmark. Um, and the DH uh, was particularly keen that we were, you know, sort of we benchmarked ourselves um, on Hackett. Um, and when I say global benchmark, it benchmarks across um, a number of different areas around shared services. And, and, and the area that, that we've been benchmarked as, uh, or accredited as a world class, is uh, in the areas of effectiveness and efficiency. Mm -hmm. So that really is a sort of a, you know, an endorsement of the way that we, uh, that we manage the processes across the organisation. Um, so last year, 2009, we were accredited, accredited world class for the first time, um, and we were very pleased that we were um, sort of re-accredited at world class for 2010, although the number of organisations in that world class quadrant actually went down from 19 to 13. Right. So, um, but it's important for us on a number of levels. Um, I think internally it's a great sort of um, motivator, and it creates a great sense of pride uh, particularly across um, you know, all of the teams involved in delivering the operational sort of process side of things. Uh, but also I think it's a reflection of uh, the investment that, that's been made, um, that the work that people have done in uh, leading a number of different projects uh, that really have improved the service that we deliver. Uh, an example of that would be uh, last year we won a National Outsourcing Association Award uh, BPO Project of the Year. Um, and that was uh, concerning a specific process around P2P. Um, that was that was led by a team across the organisation at SVS. It was driven by um, you know clients you know sort of clients telling us that they, they, they needed this process to be to be changed, um, and we were able to save over a million pounds just in looking at one particular process and streamlining that. So okay. that's kind of an example, really, of you know we talk about investing in people, we talk about you know valuing the valuing the success, and that's an example of how um, we've actually done that. In Okay, and um, I mean, some of the services like payroll may well be considered a fairly standard HR service, but I know that you've certainly uh, been changing and innovating those kind of services. How, how have you actually been uh, changing what's delivered to the client? Well, with the payroll service, um, what, what we've done there is we've, we, we've looked at um, how we can uh, make the whole process more electronic. So we're looking at things like self-service, manager self-service. Um, and in order to do that, we've been talking to third-party organisations um, in order to be able to you know, work with them to deliver these um, additional and, and, and improved services to clients. So uh, we're constantly looking for, for ways to improve the service. Uh, the NHS payroll is quite complex because there are lots of different terms and conditions. And you have an agenda for change and all that goes with that. Um, you know, different sort of timings for uh, payroll dates. And although um, the, um, the ESR system is a standardised system for payroll across the NHS, um, the way that trusts sort of implement that uh, can be quite sort of individual, uh, following some common principles. So we need to provide a service that, you know, obviously you know, part of the whole outsourced delivery model is about standardisation, streamlining, industrialising. Uh, but it's also being able to um, be flexible with individual clients in order to meet their needs as an organisation. Um, so, so really, I mean, I think that the, the advances um, in the payroll service are reflected in the, in the way that we've been able to work with third parties uh, to improve the services and to increase automation. Okay. 
And uh, there's been an election this year and a new government. Uh, they've talked a lot about devolving a lot of budgetary responsibility to, uh, to individual GP practices, um, uh, removing the, the, the primary care trusts. Uh, how, how do you think, what is the outlook really? Because I know that some of the PCTs are, are quite big clients of yours. Yes. Yeah, I think, um, I think in terms of the, the, the white paper uh, and this move to increase sort of accountability um, of GP consortia, uh, no, nobody really has the, you know, the definitive answer as to how that's going to work in the longer term. I think what the, the white paper makes very clear is that SHAs will be um, closed down, as will PCTs, and the time frames for that are actually quite short, uh, really, when you think about it. And so um, what, what we uh, envisage is that we can support SHAs and PCTs through that transition, uh, and we've got a track record of having done that in the past with um, PCTs through provider commissioner split activity. Um, several years ago, you know, the, the, the number of PCTs was reduced from, from around uh, 300 to 152. So we do have a track record of supporting um, organisations, our clients, um, NHS Trust, to actually um, go through different types of transition. Um, and then uh, the, the other thing, the other area that we are um, looking at and talking to um, different GP consultants and, and other sort of influences in this area is, um, is you know, the, the need to have good quality management information and business intelligence uh, that supports decision making both locally, regionally and nationally for the NHS continues and, and in fact the impetus is even greater um, you know when uh, trusts are charged with uh, reducing um, their, their spend but you know improving on the uh, the quality of service they're able to, to deliver and I think that SBS has got a real role to play I think we've got track record um, of uh, you know supporting efficiency savings and cost savings in the NHS um, over the last five years working with a range of trusts and we work with foundation trusts and acutes and ambulance trusts and arm's length bodies as well as PCTs and SHAs. So we've got that track record. You know, we've got um, sort of size and scale of an organ as an organisation, and I think we're well placed really to work with um, different types of organisations, be social enterprises going forward. Um, and we'd be interested to look at the uh, you know, the implications of closer working with local authorities. Um, you know, so so I think that we're quite well placed to look at the opportunities, and we're doing quite a bit of work around. Um, you know, how we can come up with services that would add value to, uh, to the, new, the new structure really in, in, in this sort of continually changing landscape.